This is Four Network. Credo is the daft of the Football Daft podcast. Is that a good story? Is that a good story? I've got an encyclopedia brain. He's got a damn man nothing. <laughs> Fuck sake. Why are you a fucking hoo? <laughs> this is Football Daft. You're a Rangers man. Uh, I'm a Hearts man. <laughs> With you and Cameron. I work for Showtime in ESPN. <laughs> and. Be the top end of Stevenson. Greedo! And this is guest host David Tanner. Three in a row for me, standing in for our good pal Ewan. By the way, everyone keeps asking me on Twitter, has you and Cameron been sacked? I think it's a good idea. Are you with me on that one? Uh, no, I like you. Oh, right. I mean, I like you too. All right, okay. But has he been sacked? No, he's not been sacked. Everyone keeps, Everyone keeps asking, John. Well, some cunt needs to fucking say something about it online or something. Mind you, if you get up at three o'clock every morning to do the breakfast show on Clyde right. and across the, the network, would you want to come in here and sit with you for an hour and a half? Some folk would pay money for that, Tanner. You should think yourself lucky, son. That's a good point. I never <laughs> thought of that. <laughs> anyway, it's good to have you here. I've got to say, you're looking gorgeous. Thank you. Talk me through the blonde hair, though. For those of you uh, who are listening in black and white, he's got blonde hair. Well, just to spice up my look in the wrestling ring, Tanner. You know what I mean? I've uh, mm. my hero is Dusty Rhodes. He's got peroxide blonde hair, so I wanted to, to pay tribute to him. But I mean, I've ever since I mean, it's the worst thing I've ever done because it's just I can't no. get away from. No, I mean it's fucking. It's I've sexy. Been, I've been cried Annie Lennox. <laughs> I've been. Fucking, <laughs> Somebody told me last night, Neil Lennon. Oh, yeah, every, yeah. What you done in your head? What you done in your head? What you done in your head? I think you look like uh, Jakobim Mugatu from Zoolander. Oh, I've never watched it. Obey my dog! <laughs> Say that, will you? <laughs> I invented the piano necktie. Holy fuck, we have David Brent. And football daft. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we do have another David coming in, though. We've got David Robertson. So we have... Now, Davy Robertson broke the record for the most sweary words on the BBC. <laughs> I think that deserves a round of applause. Like it's Steve. a great, great documentary, isn't it? Oh, it's terrific. It's absolutely terrific. And up for a BAFTA, we'll announce later on when he gets here whether he was successful or not. Yep. But um, he's bringing the trophy with him. Oh, so they won. Well oh. done, because two, do- two doors down, another one, which is a wee bit gutted out, and broke the wrestler. Believe. Speaking of haircuts, we were at Dude in the Touchline for Hearts yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Austin McPhee. Austin, Austin McPhee, man. How can you... Come on, man. He looks like somebody that puts on metal gigs at the <laughs> Inverness Ironworks. <laughs> the you know the I mean? Ironworks. That's a promoter. But uh, I, um, somebody texted me last night, I met a man, Andrew Asher, and said, is that Bjorn from ABBA <laughs> in the Hearts dressing room? Uh, well, a fucking BG. <laughs> a BG. <laughs> but it's weird saying that as a, a football man. It's, do you know what I mean? It looked kind of, I don't know, out of place. We shut and tie and along here. I mean, I suppose he's a nice fella. You know what I mean? He's a really and good I, guy. He's a smart cookie as well, well by the way. A David, smart cookie as well. Do you know what? I actually thought to myself, see before half time, I thought he's maybe pulled something, a wee bit of stroke of genius here. Because mm. as a Rangers fan, I'm going, oh, how, why has he not played this? <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying anything. Uh, Carry on. It's your pet, so it's your pet, so right. I thought, Ek Puezu. Ek right. I thought, right, well done. He's going to play a, 10 men behind the ball, keep them to half time, pressure Rangers with times right, bring on it's your Puezu, and then <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I yeah. thought, I thought he's maybe kind of he could pull one off here, but unfortunately, Hellander scores on 45 plus one. Rangers go in at half time, one no. And remember, listeners, if you get an itchy pizu, apply canestin <laughs> and stay away from women. <laughs> so the final, December the 8th, Celtic against Rangers. Are you pooping your pants? Well, do you know what? It's going to be absolutely scunnering because I'm going to be a panel and there's, oh. nothing worse, like, there's nothing worse than being on the stage during an old firm. Because the punters know that I'm thinking about the old firm game. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be a <laughs> the, Sunday the, afternoon matinee? Aye, aye. Oh, oh, so oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll miss it. I'll be um, on the stages. Chapetto. 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 Live at the Glasgow Pavilion. Come and see it. Come along. Now tell me this. What about your fellow Stevenson Sinoni? And is that what you call someone from Stevenson? Mm, well, you're either a 
top end of a, a boat medal. Who are you talking about, Gordon Smith? Stevie Naismith. He's for Stuart. Is he? <laughs> oh, is that the posh bit? <laughs> well, that's about, it's about 20 miles away for Stevenson, but what, what have you got to say about Stephen Naismith? It begins with S. Would you go up for a high ball with Nasey? The way that Conor Goldson did, because he got a right aye. sore one from the wee man. Never mind. Oh, aye. And I also see you got a wee Syrian half a rebo. Did you see that? Oh, he's playing a Syrian. Oh, did you see him rolling about the flare and agony? Was that right. a sore, fresh air kick? I think he's been watching some of my matches on YouTube. <laughs> but on the plus side for Hearts, they won the Edinburgh Derby sack race. Aye. Just ahead of Paul Hickingbottom, who went after the Celtic game. I think it's a bit weird sacking the manager after losing to Celtic. What is the technical term for that defeat? You, they, well, they get pumped. <laughs> That's the one. All right, well, it did. Pierre Paul. <laughs> All right, Sam. Ta ta. How long was he in the job? Well, just under a year. Mm. And I, I have to say, when the fans didn't buy the tickets, and he said he was baffled by that, and he said that they were bored of Hamden, I thought, oh, that's a problem because you can lose some games or not win some games as he did. But as soon as the punters stop buying tickets, Aye. you can hear the buttocks squeaking in the, the boardroom, can't you? Well, we're going to speak to Hearts and Hibs fans, and I think before we speak to them, I think what's going to happen is, David, I think it's going to be a battle between Jack Ross and Stephen Robson. I think one of them's got to go to either team. Oh. Personally, I think Robson's going to go to Hertz, and I think Jack Ross is going to end up at Hibs. What's, what the punters say might be different. What do you say? Well, I'm going to throw one into the punters. I'm going to suggest Shelley Kerr. I mentioned Ooh. this in my Twitter account. Oh, that must night. have kicked off saying that. It, it did kick off a little bit, but there's some good reasons for it, and I'll explain why when we speak to them. Anyway, an old firm cup final. Oh, my word. Well, the Are last... Are excited? Aye. Well, the last man was in 2011, David. Mm -hmm. Jelovic, the ball trickled across the line. This time round, it's a very, very different game. I'm going to be shite myself because I'm going to be on the stage at Panto. <laughs> so that's going to totally, completely throw me that day. Um, do, but you, it's do you want me to turn up and sit in the front row with my iPad oh, no, I've the, already, B, the BT Sport app? No, I'll have somebody already booked for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you haven't. <laughs> Grado's rant. So, Grado, we're enjoying ourselves here. I need to turn the air a bit sour. I need a rant from you. And I'm thinking it's going to be about your hairdresser. No, 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 no. <laughs> Did you do it yourself? No, I never. I paid for it. Did you stick your head down the lavvy and pour lavvy no, clean on your hair, the no, bleach? I got it done professionally. <laughs> Where did you get your hair cut? From the neck up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, rant at me, come on Va, what a shite, you saw it <laughs> Honestly, every weekend man Last week at the Arsenal game, I don't know if you watched it Tanner, two each And as I scramble the boat, somebody goes down It gets played out, boom, goal Place goes bush Then the place goes silent because they have this VAR check in the corner mm -hmm. It totally takes the absolute sting out of football Punters go, they want to jump I've got a feeling, if I was a Premier League fan You're jumping about going nuts and then the next minute you're having to wait in a decision, Tanner. I'm just glad that they're making an asset down there before they even decide to bring it up there. Because I've got to fix that before it comes up here. Yeah, we'll make an arse of it in a different way. Would you be happy if there was some entertainment during the pause? For example, a streaker. <laughs> Anything to spice it up. He was somebody was telling me at Crystal Palace they have the, the heartbeat, the did 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 did. That's actually quite cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. sitting there waiting. But come on. There's got to be something done with. I mean, somebody was. No, was you're right. Somebody the weekend. Somebody said, "Who was it? Was it the Rockstar was offside or something like that this week?" There was a goal the weekend. No, it was pluck. chopped. It was a pluck. Aye, basically there was something <laughs> like that. That was called off. Was VAR because of that? There listen, was something like that. Listen, I think you've nailed the the mood of the nation. Aye, and it's not even that. See the referee last week at the Arsenal game. He had an opportunity to go out and watch it and replay it. But he just stood there picking his ass. Do you know, if you're going to referee the game and there's going to be VAR, go on and at least go and double check and see what you think. Don't listen to the guy in your lug. FIFA, ban referees picking their ass. Now. So the weekend games then. Celtic winning a 30th consecutive cup tie. It's an extraordinary record. Can I give you the chance to get down on your knees and <laughs> praise the champions. Worship the Celtic. Congratulations, because I think is that they're not going for their ninth title. Ten, that'll be a ten. Is it? Aye. 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 Well, there you go. As I say, it's going to be spicy. Eighth of December, Christmas time. Mm. What you, what, what's your predictions, Tanner? Rain for that one. Rangers, I'll take that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> moving on, on he moving on. Every moving time, on. Moving Listen, on. is it not about time Hibs won a game? Oh, I've said it again. 
Talking of managerless clubs, um, Motherwell beat Livingston 2-1. Now, at the time we're recording this, we don't know if it's going to be Stephen Robinson's last game, but would that be sad if Motherwell, in third at the moment, lost a manager? Because they've done so well under Stephen. Aye, they, they, they definitely have. And I think Motherwell were looking early on to be the, to be the club that we're going to challenge. Well, not exactly challenge. And no David be Turnbull through injury, of course. Oh, exactly. So they have done really well under Stephen Robinson, but I don't know if, if, if Budge is, is going to play a bit with you know, the compensation that they might have to pay and whatever there is that, that goes along. And the fact that Stephen Robinson might Lee Motherwell, does he? They were saying on BT Sports yesterday, Roy Keane for the Hearts job. What did you make of that? No. Nah, no, no, I not. no, no, I not. The one thing I'll say about Hearts, when Craig Levine went in there, there was supposed to be a conveyor belt of coaching talent. So Robbie Nielsen, who was a, a tremendous appointment from left field, when he left, it was supposed to be somebody from within who replaced him. And it wasn't, it was Ian Cathro, which was an unmitigated disaster. Now, Ian Cathro is a terrific operator, but not in a manager's role. And he's done a fabulous job at Wolves. I'm so pleased for him. But when he left, where was the internal appointment? Well, Levine and <laughs> thing with himself. <laughs> and, 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 and Levine has now left. Where is the internal appointment? So I would say a lot has been made about the fact that it's failed on the pitch, but that has also failed as well. Um, but David, do you think that Bud should have got rid of Levine altogether? Because he's still there in some capacity. You so is say. he going to be involved well, in who's, picking who's a manager? To say, who's to say Craig Levine didn't pick the team at the weekend? We don't know that. He's, he's still. It was a very different team. Right. So it does. you would imagine that Austin did pick the team himself. But oh, he he's said they still picked in the building. He said they picked it in an hour. Yeah, well, maybe... Maybe that's how long the phone call to Craig <laughs> was. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sure it was Aussie, but it would it would seem natural to have a, a straight break. Um, it, it's an, it's been an uncomfortable um, amount of power that Aye. one man has had within the building when it's not been working uh, on the pitch. I know that you and Cameron will be a happy man, whatever the fuck he is. It'll be ranting for Britain. He will be. He will be delighted, and I'm happy for him. Do you think Mikey Stewart will be happy about it? Yes, delighted, <laughs> delighted, delighted. Congratulations to Mikey, by the way. A dad again, a dad again since we were last on the podcast. Uh, what about Ross County moving in at the top six? Uh, a draw against Hamilton, but I'll top six for County. When you think of how tough the start to the season was for them getting back in, I think that's a tremendous as we approach Christmas. I like, I like the Ross County manager. I like him. I like his interviews. Which one? The bold one, the kind of chubby one. I like him, he's nice and cuddly. I like his post match interviews. Aberdeen, what about the Dandy Dons? Scalping Kilmarnock 3-0. Now, Kilmarnock don't lose goals. Now, the two centre-backs were out, we know that. But still, Aberdeen seemed to be on fire. Now, what did I say last week? They had players missing. Craig Bryson, I said they got them back in the, get them back in the team. And they'd be doing a lot better. And what do you know, that happened in midweek. Two wins out of two. Feel sorry, I am the soothsayer. Feel a wee bit sorry about for Killebutt because they lost uh, Finlay through injury, so they were yep. obviously having to replace their centre backs. But um, it's always a tough place for Killebutt to go to, isn't it? Up at Pitodji. Uh Alessio, he's then not too bad. Sam Cosgrove, 16th goal of the season. I tell you what, if he was playing at Celtic or Rangers, everybody would be drooling over him. Mm -hmm. So now I am going to drool for him. <laughs> <laughs> drill away. Well, listen, we've got some tweets. Um, thanks for all the tweets I got personally. All of them fabulous, saying that I was the best. Great was rubbish. Get rid of him. <laughs> Make it the Ewan and David show. Uh, has Ewan been sacked? No, he's not. I has. No, he's not really. He's just taking a break. I has been sacked. I bet, I bet he doesn't like Hugh Kevins. He doesn't like Grado anymore. <laughs> he hates John, the producer. the producer. He hates Volker. No. <laughs> anyway, Ling1974 has tweeted us at, at football daft pod and he says why do hearts continue to play football that would bring a tear to a glass eye despite the fact that they're one goal off the bottom of the league is playing for a draw in a cup semi-final really the way to go no but i can understand what he was trying to do press and then hopefully you know look for a bit of gold a bit of magic but unfortunately it never happened david Mm. <laughs> Sam Daly League 1 is so competitive this year I'm loving League 1 with only 2 points separate in the top 4 and 6 points between the top 7 top team is only 22 points from 33 because everyone is beating each other listen 
the championship as well. No, actually, I get mixed up. I, I was, I thought, I thought, I get mixed up. This is championship. I'm concentrating on. Sorry, I don't know what's happening in League One. Good to be. That, that's Hulk good. To top. Oh, oh, I bloody knew it. Good for the Bairns. I'm, de- I'm delighted because they are a Premiership club and not a League One club. We're Baltic butt getting cuffed again. I know, I know, I know. Collie's got his work cut out there. Alec Waters has tweeted us. Was at the Hearts game so gutted. The starting lineup was so poor. They need to hurry up and find someone to take over the club. Sticking by Tommy Wright for my choice as manager. Mm. St- so hold on. Sticking by Tommy Wright is my choice of manager. He's done well with St. Johnson over the past five years. Now, Sam Dunder, he tweeted us two weeks ago and said, Sack Tommy Wright! Aye, aye, you can't win. You can't win. Um, what was I going to say, I know? I love football. I what? just love football. Do you know what surprised me? I know, but you would think as well that, pff, nah, I don't know. Do you know think, <laughs> you know how... <laughs> can, can I quote you on that? <laughs> Do you know, Hank, right, as a League Cup semi-final, you try and get a manager in, boom, right before the weekend so you could get that bounce. They got it right away. Mm-hmm. But no, they never done it. Angus McIver's tweeted in, both Edinburgh clubs are awful, while both old firm clubs are flying, so should make for a good cup final. Angus, that's top analysis. Do you disagree? No, he's done well there. He's hit the, hit the nail on the head. I love hitting the nail on the head. <laughs> Are we talking about the same thing? <laughs> now, listen, Grado, as you know, I live in Edinburgh because I'm big time now. And there's been a bit of chat, a bit, bit of chat at the Bridge Club about something happening in the football. <laughs> in the Bridge Club. <laughs> hey, what's going down there, David? Tell me. <laughs> Well, I was having a tofu sandwich uh, from Waitrose, and somebody said, have you heard that Hearts and Hibs have sent the managers? So let's talk about that now with uh, a fellow Edin buggerer. Uh, Gavin from Hibs Talk Podcast is on with us now. Gavin, what an absolute shambles Edinburgh is. Uh, if you were James McDonough, the Edinburgh City Manager, would you be cacking your breeks? <laughs> he's I the think last he's man standing. Job, so I think he's, he's, aye, he's safe for now, but... Aye, uh, I don't, can't remember a time when Hibs and Hearts have both had their manager sacked at the same time. That's a shout, I've never thought that. Yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. So what was your gut reaction when you heard that Paul Heckingbottom had been binned? I think it was coming. Uh, I think you look at the league games, I think it was one win in 17 or something, and that's relegation for him. Too many draws in there, no getting results, and it's not like performances were you know, giving you hope, we weren't creating chances, we were... Shying away in games. No character. No character, big man. No character. No character at all, no. Uh, really lacking some leaders. So, yeah, and, and the thing that got me with Heckenbottom was the amount of times that he threw the players under the bus, you know, coming out after the game. Rather, like, I remember uh, Gerard after the Old Firm game, took ownership of it and said, you know, I've got to take my share of the blame in that. And you look at great managers like Ferguson and Mourinho, always, like, draft, putting the, the blame away from the players. Heckenbottom was always putting it down to individual errors or throwing the players under the bus. And I think eventually players are going to be like, well, why am I going to play for you if he's coming out with stuff like that? Although I have heard that the players actually liked him. Yeah, well, I mean, they were always coming out and sort of saying good things about him and stuff. But, oh, but no, I'm, I mean, I'm not talking publicly. But, play, but, don't you? but the rumblings from within the ground, though, where uh, the training ground, were that they did like his, his style of play. What do you think was the was the final straw for, for the Hibs board? I think the Livingston game was a worry, um, but I think the Hibs board were right to give him a run of fixtures against everybody. You know, the Living games, he played everybody, yeah. and then he got us to the semi-final, so, you know, albeit on penalties against Kamarnock, and then he got the semi-final, but there was no, I mean, I know Celtic are flying there now, they're doing really well, but there was no bite in that performance, and it was, uh, it was worrying, um, yeah. seeing how easily Celtic cut us open time and time again, and, it was 5-2, but it could have been more. All right, let's cut the shite. Who do you want as a manager? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, everybody seems to think it's cut and dry that it's going to be Jack Ross. I know. I, well, cause, I mean, he, well, he was... They're saying Hearts want Jack Ross. Mm-hmm. Hibs want Jack Ross. Hearts want Steve Robinson. Hibs want Stephen Robinson. I personally think it's a case of that's what's going to happen. One team's going to end up with either or. But what does you as a Hibs fan, what do you want? Do you want a character back? Do you want... I mean, there's people speaking about Strachan because he supported Hibs as a boy. They're mm. talking about Yogi, bringing Yogi back, big character, because he's had a character in Neil Lennon. He was a big character, and I think he was a big part of Hibs' success. So they're, they're talking about Stubbs, Stubbs. He's remembered as a legend for the cup final. Aye. What do you want? Who do you want? 
Um, I think the you know somebody that's definitely going to connect with the fans and get the fans back on side. Uh, Stubbs would definitely do that, but obviously there's worries of what Stubbs actually has done since he left. You know, didn't have a good time at Rotherham. Well documented how what St Murn fans think of him now, um, but. You know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit sceptical of Jack Ross because he never managed, he only managed in the championship and then when he went down to Sunderland, he didn't he work miracles there. So, Gavin, where do you think the manager, uh, the previous manager, Paul Heckingbottom's relationship broke down with the fans? Because I thought it was bonkers of him to say something along the lines of, listen, your fans, tactically, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, I think that's true, but I think he was wrong to say it. There's two things which kind of stuck out both this season. The Rangers game, when he, uh, we were down to 10 men, and at Ibrox, he put on another striker and went 4-3-2. We were getting overrun in the midfield. Uh, Rangers went on and scored, what was it, 6 or 7 that day. I've lost count. And uh, he, was, he came out and said we got beat because of individual errors, and we didn't get beat because of... The shape uh, where we're, we're, it was so obvious that we're getting overran and overran. Mm. So that was a bit of worry that he said that. And then the St Johnson game where you know he plays Allen out of position and then takes him off because he's been ineffective when he's playing him out of position, not playing him in his best position. And then the not it was paraphrasing here, but he did sort of put a thing about the, it doesn't help that the fans are booing. It kind of it was as if he was blaming the Which fans for when I get away the result hey, rather than. Sorry, speaking of the fans, the suntan superman sat next to me was <laughs> telling me that heckin' bottom how they go at the Hibs fans for handing back the 5,000 tickets at Hamden. Aye, that did was that, a Did well, I get your was, go? I mean, I was ready for him to go by then, but he came out and <laughs> said that Hibs are bored of Hamden. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm bored of your football. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. But I think the main thing, the reason he's gone is because of the results and um, just, you know, like I say, one win in 17 is ridiculous and that's relegation for him. Yeah, are you worried about relegation? Because I, I'm I'm told that there is a feeling within the club, uh, the, pl- the people who were around the club at the time of Pat Fenlon, oh, um, feel as though there's a similar atmosphere, and therefore relegation is now a, a real worry around the club. No, I mean I still think it's early enough in the season. I don't want to be naive and completely throw it off, but no, I think we've, we're a new manager coming in. Um, I think there's a good. I think the recruitment's actually been quite good. I think there's a lot of new signings getting written off too early. Um, a lot of them have got second chances and new second opportunities to to prove themselves. So now I'm quite excited about whoever the new manager is. Seeing these new signings, hopefully, uh, do really well. Somebody play Middleton. Us getting up the league. Can so- so hopefully somebody will play Middleton. Can you stop turning this on <laughs> the Rangers? You? You're a disgrace. Listen, I'm going to throw one name at you. Here's one uh, name I threw out on Twitter the other day. Uh, see what you think of this. David Tanner suggests possibly Shelley Kerr. I, I wouldn't be against it. Really? Uh, you spoke about this on the podcast, the, the name. It's it's one, is Scottish football ready for it? Um, you know, Stephen on the podcast mentioned the, the Chelsea manager that was in the running for the job then. Mm-hmm. I think she would have been a great... It uh, would be groundbreaking, man. Shelly, I, I, I don't know, she's not really done club football and obviously being the first woman, I think it's coming, a woman in football, but I don't know if Shelly Kerr Hibs just now is the answer. That's a good answer, David. I thought that was an excellent answer. Gavin, you can come back. <laughs> it's usually Dave that's on, but he's away working the now, so I, well, well, me and Dave will fight over it next time. Bollocks huh. him. Is he also bald with a big ginger beard? No, nah, it's just me, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately, he's still got hair in the seat. And has he got a wrestling oh. belt up in his uh, wall as well? <laughs> no, nah, that's just me. Right, you can definitely come back on, Biggin. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a bong and a dildo behind you there in the <laughs> I love X-rated Tanner. It's ratings. <laughs> Cheers, Ren. Big man. Cheers, Gavin. Cheers for that. Bye-bye. All right, Gavin at Hibs Top Podcast. Thanks very much indeed for joining us there. Now we're going to move seamlessly and without an edit. Hi, <laughs> 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 To a jambo. And we've got Ross now uh, on the line. Uh, Ross, how happy are you with the state of play? Are you delighted that Craig Levine is still at the club? <laughs> um, No. I think. Uh, I'm, By the way, I'm happy to, where are I'm you? Happy to, where are you at the moment? Because there's there's a chill coming off your breath there. Aye, I'm in my shed. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you? Are you like, been kicked out of the house? No, no, I've got a wife and four kids. It's it's chaos in there. Anyway, you were saying. 
I'm, get, I'm happy that he's no longer in charge of the first team. Mm-hmm. Um, however, in the past, with his, his wee paper airplanes, he's had he's had influence before. So um, I'm no. Uh, and by that, that do you mean the fact that he was passing down notes when Robbie Nielsen was a manager? Aye, aye. Yeah. okay. Um, it's, it's no, it's not a great kind of turn the events the way it all happened. I think Anne Budges kind of came out with her original statement and then backtracked on it um, because originally it was, oh, he's, he's, he's no longer got anything to do with the first team and he's no longer the director of football and he'll only kind of oversee the academy and then she came out and said something else and I think by that point I just switched off and just went, nah, I'm not just doing it now. Well, what about the fact that she said that she wants a high-profile manager what you, Aye, that's what, great. What do you think that's she's great. thinking? But in the same breath, she also said that Austin McPhee is, is in running for that job as well. Mm. Um, Would you take now, him? Right. Before we go any further, <laughs> I would like to just say that I'll be the bigger man here and say that your team outplayed us on Sunday by far. Right. Are you sure? If, <laughs> oh, if, if Chewbacca had, had his... Uh, Tactics about him and picked a decent team. We Chabaka, might have that's together. a new one. See, we've been calling him a fucking BG. He's been taking pelters a pair guy this week, man. I feel like actually a wee bit sorry for the guy. <laughs> we've been calling him Chewbacca for, for ages. Um, him and fucking Han Solo had uh, no idea what they were doing, and it certainly wasn't a Millennium Falcon they fucking turned up. <laughs> what did you think when uh, the teams were announced? And uh, Oh, yes, this will Itchu. be good. Itchu, Itchu oh, Pizza, oh, fuck, I couldn't believe it. Um, because I mean I couldn't believe it either I'm hanging sitting here as a Rangers fan watching the game for two weeks ago he was all hours and for him not to start then I did think to myself is there a wee bit of tactical genius going on here you know presses for the first first half bring him on the second half try and come away with a winner did you, did you I think, think that was that was maybe his hope and his, his plan but uh, it else. just fucking never happened nah. um, I think the whole team needed a, a kind of a frank word with herself at half time they obviously never got that it's tough, um, but in it, losing a goal at that time. If I they mean, had been in it, nothing each would have been a completely different game, big man. I think right up until about forty minutes, they had a—I wouldn't say a hand on it, but they had. They coped under the of, pressure. A bit of nonsense about them. They looked like they were going to go in at half time with no, no problems. Right. And then obviously they lost the goal, and then just fell apart in the second half. Mm-hmm. McLean never made any fucking use whatsoever. I don't know how he gets um, a game with you, by the way. I think and he's a I, terrific player. Well Fucking Levine again, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's plenty of speculation about who's going to be the next manager. People have their the opinions. I now I'm going to throw one at you that uh, the the man sitting to my right has uh, suggested. He has suggested Shelley Kerr. To be fair, I I suggested that about a week ago. Really? I asked uh, your counterpart who's. Fucking been on longer gardening leaves than Ali McCoy's. <laughs> um, I, I suggested that to him and never got an answer off him. Um, I think it would be a pretty bold move, um, mainly because it's never happened before. Aye. Now, there's been plenty of guys that have managed women's teams, and I don't see why they can't do the same in reverse. Because Hearts, I think if that happened, the Hearts players would want to prove a point and say, right. This is the first time this has happened. Let's see if we can prove this. It could be. Aye, aye. You know exactly. what I mean? But I think Anne Budge is the kind of person that would do something like that. Aye. Although, instead of Shelley Kerr, we'd probably get fucking Maureen Kerr <laughs> and, and be sponsored by BT. But um, <laughs> it could be a way to go. But I think it's maybe too early for something like that yep. because the, all the, the kind of mishaps that we've had in the last couple of seasons. I think that. She's right in saying that she does need a big name, although there was plenty of big names that put their name in the heart the last time and never got never got past the interview stage. But then that's because Craig Levine picked himself and decided that he was he was going to be the man to fix it. I think that what we need to do is we need to get away from all this ex player mentality. Legends, ex legends, that kind of idea, the Robertsons, John it, Robertsons and stuff it like that. Ruins the legacy. Their legacy and it ruins what they've built up to get to that point. By the way, um, I would take John Robertson. John Robertson done all right, to be fair, yeah. but never kind of excelled to the point where we wanted him to. Well, I don't think he was allowed to because he was under that fucking, what do you call him? Yeah, yeah, yeah Robert 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 Robert. Robert. Um, I, To be honest, and I was thinking about this earlier, 
I would really like to see George Burley get a, another kick at it. Well, there you go. What? Um, well, I mean, he was he was ejected by Romanov for whatever reasons, but at the time he was sailing on like thirteen undefeated wins. Mm, that's and ten he never, years ago. He never now. ever got a chance to kind of do anything. What about his time at Scotland? Uh, well. well uh, <laughs> oh my word Ross thanks very much for joining us be honest with us you've got the light fitted out there in the shed have you got a porn stash somewhere well I'll, I've got one better than that I'll show you this watch oh, this dear. can you see that oh <laughs> now you're talking what is that a bottle of, it's a bottle of smoked whiskey on, a, on an optic that is tremendous. Right, thanks for coming on. Uh, you enjoy that whiskey, yours. Always I'm a pleasure. Sure, um, I'm, I'm sure it will all work out well for Hearts and End. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Ross, good luck to you. I hope you don't die of cold out in the shed there and enjoy the Edinburgh Derby in the Championship next season. Cheers for now. <laughs> thanks very much. See you later on, Biggie. Tatty bye. Yeah. Who Knows Wins is back this week. Yes. All right, because it wasn't on last week. My brother was texting me going, where's Who Knows Wins? Where's Who Knows Wins? It's going to be every other week. Who Knows Wins is a home of social betting and they're changing the culture of gambling. It's a tidy wee setup, Davey, yeah. because the, 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 the bookies don't take the money off you. You're, you're your pals, day, So you get involved in it. It's easy. There's no odds. There's no bookmakers. It's all betting against your mates. So the mere you know the mayor you win. Download the app on the App Store or Google Play or for more information, go to their website, which is www.whoknowswins.com. Mm -hmm. You then just set up a league, set an entry free, mm -hmm. choose your matches, mm -hmm. invite all your pals, yep. and then you predict the outcome of the games. The person with the most correct predictions wins the pot full of money. Now, I signed up for this. I thought I'll be a team player. Aye. I get done in by the Scottish Cup. Aye. Aye. Oh, I was raging. Penny Cook, thanks very much. Now, <clears throat> the person with the most correct predictions wins the pot of money as discussed, generally not me. So get involved now by downloading the app on Apple or Google Play by typing in who knows wins. It's really easy. I did it myself and I am a Muppet with tech, as you know. <laughs> now this week we've picked six games from across the SPFL divisions for your chance to take our money with a £5 entry fee. The games are... From the Premiership, Ross County, Aberdeen. I'm going for Aberdeen. I'm going for Aberdeen. Kilmarnock versus Hamilton. Kelly. The Plastic Pitch Derby. I think I would have to agree <laughs> with that. From the Championship, Pertic against good old Morton. Mm, well, they're at home, Partick, but that made no difference a couple of weeks ago. Him to our but Morton. Morton. Yeah, you see, is that what you're going for? You think Morton yeah. will beat Partick? Yeah. <laughs> Raised in Guro, got to go for Morton, even if they were playing at Real Madrid. And uh, the other game in the championship we're going for is Dick Campbell's Battlers are both against Inverness CT. Up the lefties! Come God. on, Abrov! Where is that Abrov top you had last week? Where is, right. Why is it not in the wall? It's in the wash. From League One, it's... Oh, for, that was good. Any guess? Any guesses as to which team feature in League One? Is it A, <laughs> Falkirk, or B, the Bairns? Correct. Falkirk against Airdrionians. I'm going for Airdrionians. Duck of the table clash! That's a duck of the table clash! Producer John, send me a Rick McBona for this weekend's <laughs> bout between Falkirk and Airdrie. <laughs> Which part of the Shetlands are you from, John? I don't know. Ah, oh, and finally, League Two. It's the, the City Derby. It's a battle of the cities, David. Yeah, the local rivals, Edinburgh and Elgin. Oh, that's good luck to be from. <laughs> now, discuss fixtures and predict results in the studio. So get involved now by signing up to our league on the Who Knows Wins app. Was that not meant to read that line? No, you Now the main event on this week's Football Daft is our star guest. It's a man who already had a couple of cup medals in his hip pocket before he left Pataudry. Joined Rangers where he won six consecutive titles, League Cups, Scottish Cups as well. But the biggest honour has just been bestowed on him this week, and that is a BAFTA. <laughs> and it's Davy Robertson. Davy, first of all, congratulations. You're now a, a TV lovey. That's it. It sits alongside the, the medals. Not many people can say they've got a BAFTA. 
Um, I've also <laughs> got certainly not in this room. No, I had it. Have you? Scott Squad won a won a BAFTA last yeah. year. So oh, I got an RTS Scotland Award if we're going to start. I, had, I was nominated for one of them but never won it. Aye. Sorry, Robbo, what were you saying? <laughs> no, uh, no, no, it's um, no, it's a bit of a surprise. You know, you, you go to a place like India and um, where I went to, there was no, there was just nothing. There was no dressing rooms. There was no footballs. There was no training gear. <laughs> there was just absolutely nothing. I got. I think I got sold a bit of a, a bag, of, a bill of goods when I went there at first because it, was, it wasn't what I expected. Um, and then here we are, what, two, three years later. Um, you know, the club and, and myself and Greg, Greg Clark, who is the, the director, um, managed to win a BAFTA. So it's, the club's, even now there's going to be a Bollywood movie coming out. Um, no way. They're, yeah, they're the, sign, the club signed a contract for a Bollywood movie. So it's either going to be a, a six series thing on, on Netflix or that, that's a Bollywood movie oh can I play you yeah can no, I play you can you? Yeah, you need to dye your hair though <laughs> <laughs> I'd be gallows, but I can, that's amazing there's actually going to be a movie really. yeah yeah so there's and uh, was it, were they, they going to film it in India no it'll be in India yeah because it'll be um, it'll be the start of the Bollywood's massive in the end yeah. so it's going to be the, the club all started when it was devastating floods about three four three years ago so Sandeep and Shamim decided to create this club um, and th it was just for the people of Kashmir and they actually applied to get in the state league, but they actually applied to get in their own league. So they actually got in I League Two, which is quite a big league. Right. Um, and th they've got they had no idea about football infrastructure, nothing. Um, so the whole thing's just like the SPFL. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's probably it's been a bit of a a mistake, um, you know, at the start. So, but they just decided to go ahead on it, and um, somehow it's it's taken the imagination of India and even other parts of the world. You know, we're even getting interviews from people from France are coming, newspapers are coming to, to wow. Kashmir to do. And well, at the moment we can't go to Kashmir, but other places in India will come and interview us. So it's, it's, it's a huge thing, and it's, it's certainly something that no one could ever ever imagine it. Grado is desperate <coughs> to ask you about Rangers. I know that we'll come mm. to that, Grado. But I really need to ask you is we, we ask all the guests, uh, all the guests on the Football Daft podcast about Indo-Pakistani geopolitics. <laughs> right. uh, so it's, that's all we talk about before we start. That's good, okay. What's your view on it, mate? Uh, no view, no view. I've got a, there's plenty of people over there with guns, so I've got to watch what I say. Well, that's what I was going to say, right? Do you know shit yourself? The first, the, f so the first time I got there, I, it was like, it was a strike when it was on. So when there's a strike, there's no, um, all the shops are closed, all the barriers are down, the shutters are down. Um, and you go around, all you see is guys with guns. I know. And they reckon that there's, the Indian army, there's one Indian, well, one basic soldier for every 12 Kashmiris. And is it, is, see how when I was watching the documentary, the yeah. amount of times that training's cancelled? Yeah. Because somebody gets shot, somebody's yeah, killed, yeah. and then that's it. Everything's shut down. Yeah. And did, did they turn the phones off as well? Yeah, yeah. So there's, mm. at the moment, well, when I first got there, so it could all kick off, sorry, but and so it could mm. all kick off basically. Yeah. And your missus hears that, mm. you know, or reads about it. Yeah, she's yeah. getting away of contacting you, no, see if you're involved. Well, it, it, it's the phones never really switch off, um, but it's the internet. Um, what will happen is you wake up in the morning and you look at your phone and, and you, you can't get an internet. WhatsApp's just spinning around, and um, you think, oh well, well somebody's been shot. Now, so, you know, yeah. As an Aberdonian, do you <laughs> refuse to phone home? Unless it's on WhatsApp for free. Yeah, correct. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, you know the good, the, the good thing about being Apologies in Kashmir. to everyone in cults. The good thing about Aberdeen, uh, sorry, uh, Kashmir is, you can't. There's no, there's no uh, movies. There's no McDonald's. Or, there's nothing. Oh. There's nothing to do. So it's very difficult. So being an Aberdeen, it's, it's it's actually quite good because it's very difficult to spend money there. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what do you do for scoff? What's the scoff like? Just curries. Is it? Well, curries, do you know? Yeah. I, actually, I tra I travelled with an Indian wrestler. Yeah. yeah. About and uh, every morning, that's what we had for his breakfast, even in America. Yeah. Curry, 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 curry. Yeah, well, I, I, we, I, when I first got there, I, I was had games and they're having curries before games. And I'm thinking, <laughs> surely they've got to have pasta and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, no, no, even the African says, no, 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 this is okay. Mm. So I took my son over there and, and he's having chicken curries and uh, Aye, but is chicken tikka before games. Eh? <laughs> the documentary, I've got to say, Real Kashmir FC, if you've not seen it, it's on the BBC iPlayer. Um, I heard it was a top-rated program mm -hmm. on the first month or so of the BBC Scotland channel, and it was an amazing bit of television. Uh, what was that experience like? Because you know, having the cameras <coughs> following you was it all the time, or how, how yeah, well, long? Yeah, well, well Greg came over. He's, he's come over twice, 
And the first time he came over, he was there for six weeks. So the first week, you've got a microphone on almost 24-7. Mm-hmm. And you watch what you say. And then I become very good <laughs> friends. <you>? I <laughs> didn't notice that. You no, know, at, at the start, at the start. <laughs> you must have edited that bit. At the start, and he says to me, oh, you need to be a bit more natural. So I thought, God, why am I going to do that? So I become a, a really good friend with him. So you forget that he's there. Aye, that's been, that's so then you, you sort of ease up danger, and you're doing danger. something. Aye, and then, and then once, once you blow up, and then I walk away, I think, oh, fuck, what, oh my God. You're and, and I'm thinking, maybe he won't put that in, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he said to me before, okay, we'll let you have a look at it, can maybe edit some bits. So we actually got a, a preview of it two days before they went on <laughs> BBC Scotland. So, um, and I'm watching it, and I'm, and I'm going, I've got to hope this bit's not in it, because I, I knew the timeline, and I hope it's not in it. I go, oh, no, it's in. And I go, this bit can't be in. Oh, no, that's in as well. <laughs> just, and then even that some is. things, I was, I was a bit when uh, I try and do a demonstration, I kick the ball, in, and, and I just fuck it up. And um, <laughs> and I think, he's put that in as well. You know, it's just... Oh, that's person. what makes I, it. Can I just say, as a TV person, as soon as you said it, I thought that was going in. Yeah. Uh, actually, for those of you who have not seen it, uh, we've got a little clip Aye. from the program now. It's called Real Kashmir FC. Here it is. Oh. Fuck! For fuck's sake! <laughs> fucking get it picked up! <laughs> Can fucking nick at the end right about here! <laughs> fucking get up off your ass! <laughs> end of clip. <laughs> we couldn't get the footage of BBC, unfortunately, so. You never told me that. <laughs> so you're now the new coach of Real Kashmir. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, that, that was uncannily like it. Now, the guy who commissioned that programme, David Harron, at yeah. BBC, and I've got to congratulate David for that, told me, um, probably off the record, but I'm going to tell you anyway, that that broke the record on the BBC for the use of the C word. Uh, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's another one for your Wikipedia page. You must, you must be very, very proud. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. it's quite funny because last <laughs> night he was at the, it was the awards last night and David was there. And he was telling me that they actually had meetings about what words they could use <laughs> and how many F words, how many C words you could use. Aye. And imagine sitting around a table discussing that. Oh, you can't use that one. No, no. And he actually got told to get rid, he got told to get rid of one of the C words. Just the one? Yeah. Just uh, one. Because 6,000 per hour is the limit. Um, listen, how's Mason getting on, on the pitch then? No, he's doing well. He was probably the, one of the best players last year. And, and uh-huh. we're in the I-League and there's ISL, which is stand, well, basically side-by-side leagues. Obviously, the ISL's got, it's a franchise league. You know, um, guys like Roberto Carlos and Robbie Keane and Berbatov have all been there. Um, Phil Brown's coaching there, so is um, Steve Koppel was last year. So wow. all those clubs, well, about 50% of them wanted Mason to sign. Um, but the yeah. owner, Sandeep, basically matched salaries and he's put a bit more money into it. So, But he, he was... He was he was really good and I think I think the biggest problem with him when he was here he wasn't fit enough he went and titled Dungeon United Queen of the South and stuff like that mm-hmm. but he, he went over there in a good pre-season in training every day he lost 18 pounds in weight Oofed. tell me <coughs> this uh, wh- which team were you playing for when Mason was born <laughs> Rangers <coughs> all three kids when I was at Rangers yeah. what were the other ones called Orangina <laughs> Chelsea <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jordan but his middle name's Jordan Kai Ah, yeah. Yeah. Kai Johansson. Well, that's yeah. what we got told when we named. But believe it or not, the names we chose had no relevance. Right. Okay. All right. Do you believe well, that? I'm wearing <laughs> it. I'm wearing it. All right. <laughs> uh, well, we're having that. We're having that. Right. Um, how did you sell Kashmir to Callum Higginbottom? He's like, I thought he was a terrific player. Yeah. Uh, for Thistle. Um, um, we. Well, I think he was. He just left Dunfermline, and he, he was looking for something else. Um, and when I spoke to him, what I tell the players is, I always say to them, look. It's the think of the worst place you can imagine to live, mm-hmm. and it's worse than that. And um, <laughs> worse than Fife, w- worse than <laughs> worse than whatever. And um, <coughs> he, I, I did a bit of research from him. I know that he's, he's he's quite famous for having a go at his own teammates. Um, and in India, it's it's a no go kind of thing. So we actually video training now, and just before I left, he he came. He's home just now as well. He comes. He goes back tomorrow or something. Whatever. But anyway, I've actually videoed it. So when he goes back. I'm going to say, look, so he can actually see himself. Because he's in India, all the players are so quiet on the pitch, they don't talk. Mm. So he's the he's only voice you hear. And he's, he's slaughtering all his teammates and everything. <laughs> but and, she, and they she, won't bite back. <laughs> Has he been a good influence in that? that no, he's sense. been good. I think <clears throat> he's, he's obviously, the level's very, very good. I mean, we've got six foreigners here. We've got Callum, we've got Mason, and I've got four Africans, one from Nigeria, two from Ivory Coast. One's a six-foot-seven striker. Oof. And um, another one, a Zambian international. So the level's really good, but I think he just gives us that, 
He's just a different player. Him and Mason are different players to what's in India. They all just seem to be a bit different. What I find when I'm watching it, right, and I don't know if it's the same if you were at a Scottish club, but they looked all oh shit for you. Every one of them. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you walked in, they looked as if, oh, Ken, he better be in a good mood today. Are they all for you? I, I'm, I'm, I'm Is that bad saying that? <coughs> no, no, but, uh, they, they know that. I mean, that bit, the, the bit where you just, where you lost the plot and you were kicking the bottles, man, every one of them's farter collapsed. They, were yeah. just, they didn't but know where to it, look. It's never, it's never really directed to the players, it's just directed to the frustration of the situation. So that when that happened, it was the first game of the season, first home game on iLeague, live on TV, big crowd there mm-hmm. and everything. And the game kicked off, I think it was five o'clock or something. So I get there at, what, three o'clock? And there's no kits, mm. nothing. Mm. Dressing room's empty. It's the first time we've ever had a dressing room because they just built them. They'd forgotten to put the kits out. No, f- mm-hmm. Try and hire Jimmy Bell now. Yeah, but honestly, good. And then because what happens is there's all these restrictions in the league. And um, so there's security. So everybody starts doing all different things. So I walk in and I go, for fuck's sake, where's the fucking kits? Games. And then what happened was the kits come in, but <coughs> Love Day, who's the, the captain, his kit was missing. Because mm-hmm. they did some photo shoot the day before. So they're chasing around Srinagar trying to find this jersey. Minutes before, well, not minutes. It's just a nightmare. Uh, did any of your lads at Kashmir tackle as hard as you did? I can't think of anyone who was as hard a tackler as you. Would that be fair? Um, well, I mean, probably, yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, no, there's a, there was a guy in my first season there. There was... A, when they, play, they played State League and this I League too, but when playing in the State League, so you're playing local teams like the bank and AG's office and, and teams like that. <laughs> so I'd, we'd play them, and the bank was the best team. So it was nothing each. And I, I, I sent this guy on, Ubad, he was, he, was, he was a bit nuts. And I says to him, look, mm-hmm. see that guy here, make sure you sort him out. Right. right? I wish I'd never said it, because two minutes later, he broke the guy's leg. Oh, yeah. Sent him. Oh, fuck, fuck, oh aye. Did you win, though? A woman. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> Change the game. By the way, that's a wee bit of fair game because did they not do that with uh, Big Tatty with uh, Charlie Nicholas? Oh yeah, yeah the, the quickest yellow card ever, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it should have been, should have been a, a straight red. Yeah. Talking of uh, quickest ever straight reds, what's the earliest straight red you've ever seen? Straight red. Can you beat six minutes in an old firm game? Did you? Did that happen to him? Yeah, it was, me, yeah. <laughs> was that when would that have been? Ninety two, ninety three, ninety two, yeah, yeah. semi final. Yeah. Uh, I would only been four then. Is that what happened? Yeah, it was Joe Miller, my old so <gasps> mate. Oh my God! <laughs> you, so you played with my Aberdeen? Played with Aberdeen. I was roommate. So you were Aberdeen. gone for him as soon as you got to the pitch. Well, Archie and Walter used to wind me up and say, uh, "Just make up. sure you sort him out early on." <laughs> so, but it was funny because at half time, I come, uh, I was I'm thinking, "Oh no, Walter's got to come in. He's going to fucking have a go at me here." And then um, he comes in. He says, "What did he say to you?" And I goes, "I oh, just said you love." Ah, fuck him. He says, "Well done." <laughs> 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 was there no a clip in, in, in a documentary where you were playing your under 19s and they were just fucking absolutely oh, yeah, scudding yeah, yeah. all your players yeah, but that's what I'm and you were like get, get them off get they don't, fucking they, off they don't care about every team you play against so we're playing at the, this bank team right so the start of was it last year we played a pre-season tournament and we got to final against the bank team and the bank score within a minute right so what, after that they just waste time the goalkeeper gets the ball lies down and one of the players actually got stretched off was it three or four times before half time to waste time? And eventually beat us one 0 right? <laughs> But in India, that's what they do, they'll waste time. Was waste. Josie Mourinho the manager? <laughs> <laughs> what was it like signing for Sir Alex Ferguson then, then when you were a kid? Well, obviously, it was, it, was, it was a team you always want to play for. As you're a kid and you grow up and, and whatever, it's your dream is to play for Aberdeen. Um, but I, I signed an S form when I was 13 or 14, and my dad, you know, the old car park at Petodri? Um, oh, the car park now at Petrodi, the Ash kind of thing. Yeah. We used to train there on Across a Monday from the So the kids stand. used to train there on a Monday night and you play against the Highland League teams um, and they just, you know, kick you to bits. Mm-hmm. So I remember mm-hmm. my dad overheard Alec Ferguson talking to, uh, I think it was Lenny Taylor saying that we've got to sign me as an S form. So that was a big thrill. But when I actually signed professional forms, um, he says to me, he goes, he says, here's your contract. And in those days it was the, you know, the Jim McLean, Alec Ferguson, four years with four-year options, the option <laughs> contract. So I had a, a two-year with a two-year option. So I goes, I says, to, okay, there you go. So I go home, two buses to get home to my dad, and I says, okay, he's offering me this. It's two years with a two-year option. He says, no, 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 it's either four years or two years. No, none of this option stuff. I goes, ah, okay then. So two buses, come back to him. I'm fucking absolutely shitting myself. The way, knock on the door, Fergie, and he goes, eh, she said, oh, my dad says, uh, can you sign two years or just four years? He says, oh, did he? I goes, yeah. He says, just fucking sign that. 
Oh, oh, signed it. Oh, really? <laughs> was, your, your, was he also the HR department? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign it. That Wait, was it. But was your was your father a Aberdeen yeah, fan? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, an Aberdeen yeah. fan. So he must have been delighted then. Yeah. Well, he he was delighted when I signed for Aberdeen, but. When I signed for the other ones, he wasn't too happy. No, no. Where does this whole Aberdeen Rangers thing begin then? Um, I, I, I think I think it's when Aberdeen were sort of dominating for a while in Dundee United. Then Sooners came in and changed the whole thing. Mm. And I think it's a lot to do with the money part of it, and obviously the, you know, the Ian Durant uh, tackle so. as well. And mm. did you have when you signed for Rangers? We'll come back to Aberdeen. But yeah. When you signed for Rangers, did you get any kind of sheep shearing? Uh, comments from the, was there any kind of I got, bad blood from the radio? Yeah, fans? well, or the Aberdeen. Aberdeen fans? No, I got. I used to get like you know the, the usual letters through the, the mail. He used to, people, but in those days, you used to send mail Aye. and not emails and stuff. So, um, where was that getting sent to? Ibrox. Ibrox. Yes, I would get them, and sometimes they would be like just a piece of paper with the, the newspaper letters. Oh, like a oh, fucking like a movie. De- death threats, Aye. kind of things. Yeah, uh-huh. and then some, you know, bad. Just letters from people. And I just I was so young and naive that I just uh, came up and didn't. So tell me what it's like the very first time you turn up at Ibrox. Mm-hmm. Is it Ibrox you go to, yeah, yeah. to sign? So tell me, talk me through that day. <coughs> Who do you walk through the main doors? Who yeah. greets you? Well you, you What's the deal? Well obviously you got to wear the call and tie, is it which is right. something new, so I had to say had to buy a call and tie. Really? Um, <laughs> so I didn't have any. And I remember driving into Ibrox and you go through the, the doors and standing the commissioners there and then he takes you through the doors and Jimmy Bell takes you right. and he marches you down the corridor and you, and you, you begin, oh, and you walk in, walk in the door and you see all these, Terry Hullock was there, was Mo Johnson, <laughs> uh, Mark Haitley, um, obviously Goffey, the goalie was there, Gary Stevens, Trevor Stevens, and I'm thinking, oh my God. So then Jimmy says to me, that's your number there, because there was no kit numbers, it was just a training number, that's number six. And he says, you've got big shoes to fill, that's Terry Butcher's. Aye. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, great. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm sitting there and, and Richard Goff's there, Ian Ferguson, and then there's like Ian Durant and McCoy. So I was in the sort of corner where all the, the jokers were and all the personalities were. And I'm, I was, you know, pretty quiet and shy. And I was, I was really intimidated by them. Aye, were you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can imagine that. I felt that, you know, you, 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 I, I always just this thing that I felt that I wasn't good enough to be there or, or to play for Aberdeen oh, or David. Rangers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Come on. It's just, I, I, it's might be the Aberdonian part of it because mm-hmm. Aberdonians are quite reserved kind of people. Um, but to be fair to Jimmy Bell, the day I left Rangers, he says, you know, he says, I said to you about the number six, Terry Butcher, but you've certainly filled oh. up with things. So it's, it's good. That's it's nice. Ma, Ma, can I just, I, <coughs> want, I want to speak to you about the Old Firm games. My first ever Old Firm game was the free each game mm-hmm. in uh, 1995. So that was obviously my first Old Firm mm-hmm. game. What was your first Old Firm the game like? And what tells about it? The first Did one somebody was pull you up and go, right, Davy, no, this is a score? No, the, nah, the first one knew. was, uh, Walter Smith was very good he, if you were playing Motherwell, St. Johnson or Celtic, it was the same build-up. There was oh, no... Really? Nobody got treated any different. And, and I think yeah. that's... <clears throat> I think that's why he was so successful. Even even there was times where, you know, I think we lost to Falkirk, we lost to Celtic, and then we got knocked out to AAK Athens or Warsaw. He was under pressure. Mm. and um, But he never, ever showed that he was under any pressure at all. He kept it away from the players, which is good. But the first game, I remember the first game, um, was at Parkhead. And um, what I, I noticed was that Every time you play for Rangers, or, you, or if you're at Aberdeen, come to Ibrox or Parkhead, for the first 10, 15 minutes, you can't hear anything. Is that loud? <coughs> um, so you can't hear like your teammates shouting or anything. But I know that old firm game in particular, you couldn't, 90 minutes, you couldn't hear a thing. Really? So you're almost like on an island, you're on your own. You, you know, you, you need eyes in the back of your head because, mm. you know, like Goffey, Bomber, and that, they couldn't shout. You, you were there shouting at you, but you couldn't hear them. I was shouting at them. You couldn't hear a thing. Wow. And you didn't know where, you know, what's going to happen next. Who was your toughest opponent in those old firm games? Joe, uh, Joe Miller, more so the fact that he was a friend and I just didn't want him to get the better of him. <laughs> and every time he got past me, it was like an insult. Um, but I, I used to enjoy playing against De Canio because you could Aye. just wind them up so much. And get a bite of <coughs> Yeah. How did you do that? Um, I, I just like kick him and, and do certain <laughs> things. Just kick him. And, and, and that's what, certain things. Eh? We're well, talking you, dark you just kick him and, and maybe you'd follow through a little bit. Um, and then, but I wasn't the only one. Other people would do it. You know, I mean, Alan McLaren, for example, he was the, he was great at doing the touch tackle. You know, pretend you take a bad touch and then go through something. Aye. He could do that to a tee, and he, I did it a few times to in an old firm to to De Canio. but as the game went on, everybody would just wind him up. Like Fergie would maybe say things to him and chip away. What kind of hangs? 
Ah, <laughs> um, <coughs> lip read. Um, so I, I remember there was one game, it, it was about two minutes to go, mm-hmm. it was at Parkhead, and he's down in the corner of that byline, and my legs had gone like jelly, and he could have walked past me. And, and he, he did all these step overs and stuff, like that, and he just kicked the ball out of the park Aye. for a goal kick. And he could honestly, could have gone, he could have walked past me. Wow, he, he, just, sure, yeah. he just get inside his head. Great player, right enough, but he just get inside his head. Right. You know. What about the Champions League? <coughs> um, what, what was that like? Because you were, the, is it something you're proud of that you were part of the first British team that played yeah. in that tournament? I think the when we played Leeds, it was pretty incredible. Um, you know, everybody, I mean, to be fair, I think Leeds were on their <coughs> way down anyway. They'd maybe lost a few players and what have you. But um, the fact that you know you play against them and all the English, the media, so you got no chance. You beat them two one. You've still got no chance. Um, and then you obviously beat them two one. Um, but I, I don't know if you remember. Uh, Leeds played Stuttgart in a qualifying game. Yeah, and I, I honestly think that if Stuttgart won, I don't think in the new camp, it. wasn't it? it was yeah, in Barcelona, and that to replay it. Mm-hmm. So because Stuttgart won the first time, so we were going to be playing Stuttgart. Yeah, when the draw, I remember the draw coming yeah. up on the on the old printout. Yeah, yeah, and it said VFB Stuttgart versus Glasgow Rangers. Yeah. And I thought, you know, then you think I don't think we'd have beaten Stuttgart. Mm. So I think we've got a bit of luck with Leeds because it's more like a they, they played a similar style to the way we played. Yeah. Um, but I'll never forget. It's probably the only time that I ever got a cheer at, at Elland Road was when because uh, <laughs> I, I didn't do too well when I was there. I remember walking up, and, and the Leeds United fans actually gave us a stand ovation when we walked. Really, up, <laughs> really which is incredible. Yeah, it's twenty-seven years ago today since the Elland Road game. Yeah, is it? Yeah, was that? A, it's hard to believe. Was that a career high for you that particular game? Yeah, that that whole season, to be honest, was probably the best season. And, and I've always been asked what's the best um, game or whatever you ever played. It's just that season. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think the fact that we went so close, but the fact is that, you know, I used to get a lot of stick from Aberdeen supporters as well. And um, that season, Willie Miller was a manager and they were second in the league. We beat them in the League Cup, beat them in the Scottish Cup. And, you know, for me, that the last game against uh, Aberdeen, the Scottish Cup, to win, to clinch a treble, um, OK, we just got knocked out of Europe at that point. And you, the game had to be played at Parkhead. So you're in the home dressing at Parkhead against my old team and you win the treble. It doesn't get any oh, better than that. Did you get a bell off Big Phil Snellers before he joined Rangers? Yeah, no, he, he did. He's, it was obviously when you come to Rangers, there's a bit of apprehension about you know, the rivalry between the two. And, um, but it's very, very difficult to turn down. I mean, I think he'd already made his mind up he was coming. Um, you know, he'd been at Aberdeen for a long time. And, you know, I think... Aberdeen's a, a great club as well, but he always wanted to make that step up, mm-hmm. and and he, and he did it, um, and you know he enjoyed it, and, and he still, you know he he still goes back to Glasgow and stuff like that. Was know? there rumours about the 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 game at Parkhead where he shot out playing? Well, there's been there's been rumours about Theo a, a few times. Uh, there was one when Aberdeen, when the league decided against Rangers, when Aberdeen only needed a draw to mm-hmm. win the league. Um, and he didn't play in that game. Oh, Michael really? Watt played, didn't he? Yeah, Michael Watt played, yeah. How, how long did it take Mark Cale to smash him? Well, it wasn't very long. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was no. Game I think, I think uh, Mark, Mark's got this claim to fame that he actually turned Michael Watt, because he ended up being a policeman, Michael Watt. <laughs> and he says, he says, I'm the guy that made Michael Watt a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, what a shame. But um, no, I know Michael as well, but... Um, <clears throat> so where's the, the, but the, but there was rumours as well with Theo as well. He did the same thing in... It, when he played for Holland. Yeah, Germany game. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, and By the way, it's worth pointing out that in the 1994 World Cup, yeah. that Dutch team that Advocat managed, which got to the quarterfinals, semifinals, um, had two Aberdeen players in the squad. Hans Hillhouse, yeah, yeah. What does it say about Aberdeen in 1990 when you were playing the team? That they had two players yeah. in the Dutch World Cup squad for mm-hmm. Italia 90, exactly, that classic yeah. World Cup. Um, well... Uh, I think Alex Smith at the time, he was the guy who started all the Dutch revolution. There was other players that came in, Paul Mason and Theo uh, Tenkat and these guys. But <laughs> the fact that when Hillhouse, I don't know how he managed to get Hans Hillhouse, because I remember his first Berge. game. Fergie. Fergie gave him the tip off, apparently. Because yeah. he came from a club like PSV, and you go from, no disrespect, but you go from PSV to, to Aberdeen. Maybe he was in and out of the team at PSV, I don't it know. He was put out of the team by some fella called Romario. Okay, that's maybe mm. why, yeah. Just after um, on the, the European Cup. Yeah, but we had, that time we had uh, Charlie Nicholas and uh, uh, Hill House up front. Mm. It's it some partnership for, no, you know, for that Aberdeen. And I remember the first game against them, he scored an overhead kick and he scored two goals he scored in his first game. Yeah. Then he scored a great goal against, a volley from outside the box against mm. Rangers. And, 
Um, I think he was the one that scored just before the league decider. I crossed the ball in and he scored to basically put the game to the last game at Ibrox. But you, you were ahead that last game. Yeah, we uh, that was that's that's the. It's it's always I get asked this a lot as well that we played St Johnston at Petardry the second last game of the season Aberdeen and we won two one and the game finished early but because something happened because I think the Rangers were playing at Fir Park or something and <clears throat> when we came in the, the, the score at, at Fir Park was that we had to go to Ibrox to win the following week but then Motherwell scored another goal so we had a draw we could go there and draw. And then I remember after the game, everybody sat celebrating. When the Rangers final whistle went as if we'd won the league. But we still had to go to Ibrox. Right. And but you had to go and draw. A draw, but that, that, that was... Is that a pain in the arse? Yeah, because I, I think we, we were playing 4-3-3. Three, three, then I think we went 4-4-2. Four, four, we, we, I think they, they changed, Jockey and uh, Alex Smith changed the way we played. I'm not saying it made any difference. Cause we had a couple of uh, chances to score early on. But when you go with it, it's all in your back of your mind. If you draw, you'll win the league. And it's not, I've, I've coached teams as well when you think we'll need a draw. And I, I try not to tell the players that a draw is enough. But you still want them to know that a draw is enough, but you can't tell them. Yeah. Aye. Do you fancy coming back to Scotland as a manager? Is that the, is that the aim? <clears throat> I'd like to at some point. Have you well, applied for the Hearts job? No, 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 no. Um, I, 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 to be honest with you, right, I do want to come back at some point. Aye. Just to be at home. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's hard. I mean, that's three years almost I've been away the first time it's four months and it's eight months and, and it's this could be the longest season ever. It could be 18 months I'm away for, I don't know. Um, but ideally you like to come home. But I've got such a, an emotional attachment really? attached to the owner, one of the owners, uh, well, Sandeep and Shamim. Um, they've been great with me. I mean, obviously I've, I've been the only coach well, they've had. And just the people of Kashmir as well. You mm -hmm. know, we, when I first started, obviously the club just started. So there's no supporters. Nobody knew who we were. So we'd play I League Two. We get 300 people there. And now, I, in the main I League, we get over 20,000 at the games. So what would your dream job be? There's two clubs in Scotland. Right. Know. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I, I think to be honest, I was I was out of the game for 10 years in, in America. I coached USL and, and youths and ran a club there. And I've probably been away from it for too long. Yeah, but you learn different things, though. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I, th I think the experiences I've had. I don't think any coach has dealt with what I've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, there was one game. This was all why the documentary was commissioned. I had to do a trailer. So Greg came up to my house and, give us your best story. So this was before we played. It was just before I League 2. So we got invited to this tournament in a place called um, Bandipora. So you go in the car, I'm in the car, the team's on a bus, this little rickety bus. And we're driving and the roads are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the guy says, so see over that mountain? Yeah. That's yeah. Pakistan over there. Because, all right, so we're going further and further away. So the, Shamim, the owner, says, it's a, it's a little wee stadium. I mean, if you remember, like, Highland League grounds, it's like, that, there wasn't even barriers. And there's a tiny little stand with a, a, about five seats at the top. And he says, this is the first game it's going, and here it's going to be floodlit. So what we'll do is, you can come and sit up with me because you're going to be the only white person there. And it's all just full of, like, Muslims and, and all that kind of thing. So um, I get there. And... There's not a lot of people there, but what they've done is they've put a rope all the way around the pitch, um, obviously to keep people away. And there wasn't many people there, so we went to the dressing room and we come out. And by the time the game starts, there's twenty thousand people there. <gasps> they just flooded in, and the lights are on. So this rope's on. So I, and he says, "Oh, you'll be safe enough. There's a rope. So I'm, I'm on the rope. A rope. <coughs> a rope. So anyway, the lights go out. Right, power cut. First light, lights go out, as India does. Everything. N n nothing goes to plan. So. The ropes come down, all everybody's on the pitch. Well, f f so then they're trying to push everybody back off the pitch. So eventually they get the game going, and then we score. And again, everybody's back on the pitch. And then they get pushed back again. But the rope's gone, so that's just standing on the touchline all the way around. And the ball never out of play because it, it was like an indoor game. It was like hitting people and coming back in, hitting supporters, coming back in. So <laughs> the game... Ball back yeah. So the, the, the ball hey, never went out. Did th award throw-ins? No, there was no throw-ins, because unless it went over somebody's head, somebody standing the side of it over, there was no throw-ins. So then um, <laughs> the other team equalised about 20 minutes to go. And by this time, everybody's back on the pitch. And we've got a little kick guy. <clears throat> and he comes over and he's got a fence post. And he says, Azra, one of the players, says, Azra's been hit. Says, what do you mean he's been hit? He goes, somebody's hit him with a gate post. <laughs> so somebody can't hit one of our players with a gate post. 
So, see, I, I looked, and here's him lying there. He's got blood coming down. So the security guys at, in Shamim, his house, um, he's, they're the guys that took me to the game in the car. They just grabbed me and ran me out into the car. I had to go in the back of the car, basically get my head down. And we, went, we drove around all these streets and so I just waited in this back alley until it was safe because it all kicked off and everything. The game got abandoned. Wow. And then um, what they said was, you need to come back. It's a semi-final. You need to come back and play the semi-final. I just <laughs> fucking come back all the way there. Right. I goes, I'll tell you what. Okay, we'll come back on a Monday afternoon because you think, well, everybody's going to be working. <laughs> and um, he says, okay, and we'll just play the last 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming. So we did. We played the whole game again and nobody was at the game. What is the toilet situation over there in India? I mean, <laughs> when I see it, is it... You basically, you know, if you've gone yeah. crouched down, a hole in the ground. What do you wipe your ass with? Eh? What do you wipe your ass with? It's a hose. a hose. That's what I'm saying, so doesn't it? Aye. Yeah, so the first time I ever experienced it, I was I was going to the airport, uh, suddenly got the airport, and you got loads and loads of security. So in, in the airport, it's, it's so much security because obviously it's a militarised zone. You actually get to the gate of the airport and you take all your suitcases out and go through security and then put everything back in the car and go to the terminal. So that's the start of it. So you can imagine what it's like. So anyway, there was one time I'm going on a flight and I'm dying for shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I open the door, fucking hole in the ground. You don't get this in sports scene, do you? <clears throat> and I'm thinking, like, how do you how do you do this? Because <laughs> there's a hole, right? There's no handles. I right. can't hold on to anything. And I've got a pair of jeans on. So you, you obviously you got to pull them down. You've got I, to squat. And there's a hose. So you've got to balance mm-hmm. with a hose. So do you know when you talk your... Well, I, I, I actually I stood there for about 10 minutes thinking, I've got no idea how I'm going to do this Aye. without my jeans getting soaked. Aye. And then you look, where's the paper? There's no paper. But we've got this uh, goalkeeper, goalkeeper coach Jonathan Craig. He was at Hibs and Hearts and he's Fife and Berwick and everything. And he's, he's a laugh a minute. He's, he's a, he just joined us and he's the funniest guy I've ever sort of, you know, sort of worked with, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, he's telling us, he says, uh, so see these toilets, this hole in the ground, he says, how does it work? <laughs> And I, go, I told him what he did. He says, all oh, right. He says, what he does was he actually pulls his jeans down and sits. Sits down? Sits on it. <laughs> no! Oh, it sits in everybody else's piss and shit. Yeah. <laughs> no! This was bad enough. It just got so much worse. And, and I says you, to him, this says, sounds like the old Brock Oh, film. no, you don't do that. He says, oh, but I've done it more no, than man. once. That's <laughs> <laughs> quality. You must come back to Aberdeen, Definitely. come home, and just... Shut the toilet door and go for a right good shake. Well, right we, we're, actually renovate, we're renovating a house, and I've told my wife that I want a hose. Well, that's what no. I was going to say. You're not, you're, you can't, so you're implementing it in your own household. Yeah. You see that you're getting your wife to hose. And the toilets are all flooded and whatnot. So yeah. you're getting your missus to hose her else. Well, not hers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That's dear. Quality. Good lord. You want to ask me about Aberdeen, David? Take away. I do. T- moving from shit houses to Aberdeen. Seamlessly, um, what was it like getting into that first team? Who, who were you playing when you made your debut? <coughs> yeah. Was it all the Cup Winners Cup team? Or yeah, well, we, when, I, when I first started playing, I actually came on as a sub against Hamilton. Um, Tommy McQueen broke his leg, so I, I went straight in. But, but what Fergie did was he didn't even tell me I was going to play the first game as a sub. So, what he does is in those days, there's only two subs, and um, he'd, he'd get some of these young boys in the squad, so there's about 18 guys there, and you know that you're never going to play. So I, um, you're going to dress to him at what quarter to two and you're a sub. And he doesn't even tell you beforehand. And I think that's what he's good at. He, he doesn't let you panic or, or anything like that. Um, so You've got no time? N- no, no so you've got no time to think about, oh, God, what happens if I got on? Aye. So anyway, it was about what, 10 minutes in the second half. I, think, I come on for Brian Mitchell, I think it was. So I go on and, and the team was Jim Layton, Stuart McKimmy, Willie Miller... They need guys like Jim Bett, Peter <laughs> Weir was playing, Peter Weir. Billy Stark, uh, Davy Dodds, um, I can't remember, John Hewitt, all these, uh, all these guys there. So I go in there, and after about two minutes, whoever was playing right wing for Hamilton fucking zips past me, pings the cross in, Jim Layton comes out and gets his teeth smashed in and lips all oh. burst and everything. So then there's no sub goalies, are there? Uh-oh. So we're standing in the box, and they're all going, Alec or Willie saying, hey, Davey, you, you, you didn't go. Oh, I'm not going to go. First game. First I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. So, and, and I managed to hide. And to be fair, Brian Irvin volunteered to go in. But imagine that your first game end up in goals. Oh, Has Jim Lake never forgiven you? <laughs> I've never spoken to him about that. <laughs> yeah, it's probably because yeah. he, he can't speak anymore, poor Jim. <laughs> uh, we asked this last <clears> week <throat> of uh, Stephen Dobie. We're going to ask it of everyone. Yeah. Who is the ugliest player you played with? <laughs> 
I think I've already mentioned him. I knew you were going to say that's a sin. Which you can't say that again, pure cunt. Um, obviously, you got David Dodge is renowned for whatever he's renowned for. <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget one day, uh, one game I'm playing at Parkhead, and somebody says to me, he says, whatever you do, don't run out the same time as Dodgy <laughs> for the warm-up. And you go out, and then the whole place is bouncing. Obviously, David Dodds, the elephant man. Ah, and, he, and he's stretching, you think, how the hell can you play with that? That's terrible. True. See how when you were talking about when you made your Aberdeen debut, where was your feather? But talk, talk us through that. Uh, well, yeah, so um, a week, a week I, I was 17. So a week before, um, well, the ridicule was that my dad, an Aberdeen game, would always go to the Bonacord Golf Club across the road. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah. next to the stadium. Yeah, so... I would go in there, and because I was under 18, I wasn't allowed in the main bit. So I had to go in the locker room, and my dad would come out with a Coke and a bag of crisps on it, with all the other like kids at 7, 8, I was 16, 17, whatever, just waiting for him to go home. Nowadays we call that neglect, but carry on. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, so I was in the squad, and there was no mobile phone, so I couldn't call anybody. So you know, that's the time when Fergie says to me, OK, and the subs are where Robert Connor and David Robertson. I couldn't call my dad to tell him. So he obviously came from the Bonacore Golf Club, came down and, God, my son's on the bench. He had no idea. Oh, no right. way. And so did, he then, the, did he have the crisps in the coat? <laughs> no. So after, so after <laughs> the game... After pre-match. <laughs> so after the game, like, bear in mind, the week before, I was in the locker room, crisps, I was too young to go in. So I go back, obviously, because after the game, I'd go and get my dad in the Bonacore Golf Club. And they let me straight in the front door. <laughs> Somebody bought me a beer. <laughs> And I was signing autographs. Oh, that's amazing, <laughs> that's amazing isn't it? What a difference that's a day a makes. Oh, I know, yeah. What a difference a day makes. Um, tell me about uh, the, the real standout players when you are at Aberdeen. You mentioned Jim <coughs> Bett there. I, I remember him bossing a game yeah, against yeah. Spain, for example, yeah. for Scotland. Uh, Heel House. And Charlie Nick's arrival <coughs> yeah. straight from Arsenal was something special, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I was very fortunate. I think when I first got in the team, Peter Weir... Um, uh -huh. I, I, he's probably one of the best players I've ever played with and I think he helped me as a kid yeah. you know I'd make as a, a young kid I'd make mistakes and concede goals and screw things up and, and he would encourage me all the time and he's probably the only winger that I played with who would actually fill in for me if I went forward because Loudrop Mikhailichenko mm -hmm. Houston they never tracked back I had to sort of run past them mm -hmm. on the way back um, but you, you mentioned Jim Bett I think he's probably one of the most underestimated players mm -hmm. Billy Stark as well um, Billy Stark was a guy that you wouldn't even see him in a game and suddenly he scores two goals. Mm -hmm. um, but Willie and, Willie and Alec were, were great for me. Um, Alec, <coughs> you probably, you probably know him, but he, he's one of the nicest guys ever. He's got time for everybody. Even now, you know, if you ever see him, he bumps in, he asks about your family and all kind of stuff. But he, was, he encouraged me all the time. Um, and Willie was just the grumpy one. He was a guy that... Um, was it tough love from Willie? I don't know if there was much love in it. Was it too tough? Um... Well, what he would do was, because obviously he was a legend and, and he could do anything he wanted. And there was times when he would get the ball and, and pass the ball to me. And, and you know that the, the, the main stand at Petodi, that the boards are, are pretty high. And it would clear me and, and right in. And he'd point his finger at me. And then all the Aberdeen supporters would start having a go at me, <laughs> blaming me for that. <laughs> and, but he was brutal, really brutal with me um, and a lot of the younger players. But that, probably the, the, the good cop, bad cop with Alec and, and Willie really helped. But... Like guys like Stuart McKimmy, um, he was good for me because I was a young guy in Aberdeen. Suddenly at 17, 18, you know, you can go into town, everybody knows who you are and you have a few drinks and everything. He was the one that told me, he says, look, you've got a fantastic career ahead. You, you don't need to get involved with that and all the other guys that do that. Just look after yourself. What was your best lesson from Fergie, your best life lesson? Because he's now lecturing at <coughs> Harvard yeah, on well, such matters. There was, it was the day my sister got married. Um, I actually missed the wedding because I, I, we were playing Motherwell and I think I was only 17 or 18. And it was 2 1, but minutes to go, and John Gagan comes down and I, I'm in the box and a rash tackle, penalty kick to each. So you can imagine what Fergie's going to be like after the game. <laughs> and, um, but to be honest, on the Monday, he told me about it and, and I never ever tackled in the box again after that. So you, you never. remember that? Nope, nope. And then there what was. Did you uh, do? Eh? What did you, you just do? just jockey them and time block, block, block them and stuff like that. And mm. I think w over the career after that, I gave away one penalty kick after that. Wow. Yeah. And have that's you, something that happened. Have but you implemented that into your own managerial kind of view? Yeah, I, I think, I think I, I remember there was some podcast that Roy Keane was on, and Roy Keane says the one thing about Fergie was he knew what to say to players at the right time. Mm -hmm. 
and and, and, that, and it's true. And that, I I try and implement that a little bit. Yeah. But there was a of all your ex-managers, are you most like Fergie? Are you most like Walter? Um, probably Walter Smith because he I think he he managed to keep in my time anyway. He managed to keep everybody happy, even if they weren't playing. You know, but there was a I don't know if you remember there was a, a youth cup final. Um, Aberdeen played Celtic. Uh, it was at Pitodri. And it was just um, Aberdeen had just won the league. They oh, beat was it a Hearts. four-two game. Yeah, it's a classic game, this, yeah. isn't it? So they, they beat um, they beat Hearts. Stuart McKimmy, I think, scored a winner yeah. at Tynecastle. So they won the league, but they wanted to celebrate it. So we played on a Tuesday night, and um, the, the first team got presented with a trophy. So it's a big night. There must have been about 10, 15,000 people there. So after the presentation, all the Aberdeen supporters stay and watch this game. We're playing Celtic. They had Derek White and um, you know that type of players. I think we had we, Joe Miller played for Aberdeen at the time. Stevie Grace. Paul, Paul Wright was he in that game? Bunyan played. Yep. Yeah. Bunyan played. Yeah. Come on, come Yeah. Scored yeah. 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 <coughs> the cup final. So um, Will, Willie Garner was Fergie's assistant, and so Willie took the team that night. And he says, come on, you know, the first team's here watching it. There's a big crowd, big night for the club and, and everything like that. So I think at halftime we come in, it was 2 nothing or 3-0. We're getting beat, we're getting hammered. Wow. So uh, Willie comes in and he goes, Willie Garner says, come on, guys, look, big night. You know, you know, just just play the game out. You know, don't don't do anything stupid. But then suddenly the door bursts open. Uh-oh. Fergie comes in. And uh, Petrodi addressed him. It's like the goalkeeper all the way around to the door going out. And he comes in and he slaughters everybody. Never misses anybody. All the way out, it was about 30 seconds, and it was my first taste of Fergie. And I think I was about 15 at the time, and there was guys at 14, 15, 16, and he slurred everybody right up to their face, and bleh, embarrassment, and blah, blah, and walked out. And everybody's going, what the hell? What? So we went out, and I think we won 5-3 after the exit. Ah, there you go. And he was the first one to congratulate everybody. But that's the standards that he, mm-hmm. he demanded. And, and I think, <clears throat> for me, that, I'm not saying it made me a winner after that, it was almost gave me that thing where you never give up. You mm-hmm. keep you keep going all the time. I can tell you've uh, your your male at Walter. I see you're wearing your your broom brogues. Did they? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a, no waistcoat though. <laughs> <laughs> or cardigan it was, wasn't it? Cardigan. <clears throat> Fergie's assistant for a while yep. at Petodre was Archie Knox. Yeah. Was he a terrifying individual? And were you glad to see the back of him when they went to Man United? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Archie. I've, I, I spent probably most of my professional career with Archie yeah. because he was at Aberdeen and he was at Rangers yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But at Aberdeen, him and they were Fergie, they were both just <coughs> nuts. Fergie, I remember um, Aberdeen with, with Adidas at the time, and I used to come in the summer holidays and you had to wear Adidas stuff, but they wouldn't give you kit. And stupid me walks in and I've got I put on a pair of Dungeon United shorts, you know, the black <laughs> ones with all these things. <laughs> Archie comes in, just grabs them. Pulls them off me, Buffs you. puts them in the bin, and then gives me this pair of shorts that were like 20 sizes too big for me. <laughs> yeah, nice. but, but that's what Archie was like at the time. It was a real sort of discipline. But then when he came back to Rangers, he was totally different. Was he? He was, he was a bit like a social convener. You know, he was happy and um, just, he was just like, Walter was, didn't say too much, but it was at that command, that respect. Archie just got on with everybody. And mm-hmm. I think the players just wanted to play for the both of them. Is that why he got on so well with Gascoigne? Yeah, well, the thing with Gaza is that he's so... Um, I think he's the only person, Walter's the only guy that's controlled him. Um, and it's not even so much control, it's almost letting him do his own thing within reason. I've got a player in Kashmir called Farhan, and um, he's a great player, he's a Kashmiri. He speaks no English, or virtually none. So, um, we, we won I League 2, the final game we won it, I, come, I says after the game, I says, Fan, you were fucking brilliant. You were fucking great. You were fucking great. So in the hotel afterwards, I'm looking at him, and he's all, like, down and sad and everything. I think you've pelted him. Yeah, because all he heard was, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> so somebody says, to him, no, he said, you were brilliant. You were great. So he's okay. But this guy lives in a part in Kashmir where it's close to where all the trouble is. So he, sometimes he can't come to training. And then if you, he smokes, right? But he's a fantastic player. You, we can't play the game without him. So he's, he's a bit like Gaza in the way that he's a bit of a, a free spirit. So sometimes he'll, if like if I say like, <coughs> okay, three days off, he forgets to come back. <laughs> and he's always changed his mobile phones. And then the players are saying, you can't let him play and you can't do this. And then like we'll have a meeting or something. And maybe it's seven o'clock. The meeting's at seven o'clock and five past seven. Um, he, he calls somebody because he can't speak English. Or oh, Fahan just said he can't come because there's, someone's blown up outside his house. 
I says, but it's five past seven. He, if he left at half past six, he'd have been there. <laughs> he would have missed it. Yeah. Right. But, but the thing is, you, I've got to play him. And he's a bit like Gaza. And, and he could, this guy could play it on the street and play in front of 80,000 people and he would just play the same way. Aye. I saw Sir Alex speak a couple of years ago at the Street Soccer Scotland dinner and he said that Paul Gascoigne was England's best ever player. You know, yeah. Bobby Charlton would be yeah. up there with him, he said. <coughs> yeah. Was Gaza the best player you played with? No. That's, well, he, that says he, it all about Rangers at that no, time. He was a great player, but um, loud up for me, just for me, it's just a selfish way that. Because he played. Loud up, I, I would make a run and he'd, make, he'd make, give me a pass. Whereas Gaza would get the ball and he threatened to come to my side and I'd make a run and he'd turn and go out the right hand ah. side. <laughs> so I think in, in I think three or four years that I played, he must have passed the ball to me about twice. <laughs> but he sort of teased me a little bit. I'm going, I'm going, and then turns and goes the opposite way. But he's, no, he's a fantastic player. Yeah. And David, we can't end this without asking about the victory, the trophy that every Aberdeen fan wants to hear about. What was it like winning the Tenant Sixes? Um, <clears throat> well, there's, I was the worst six-a-side player <laughs> ever. So Ian Porterfield was a manager, so... We, we, nobody really knew how to, 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 to play the six sides, but there was a rotation system, so it was like three subs, so it would be maybe um, Stevie Gray would go on, then Joe Miller, then me. So it got to the final, and um, it was coming up to my turn in the second half, and it was getting close to the game. So um, somebody went on, somebody else, it was my turn to go on. So I'm away to open the door to go on, and Ian Portfield just grabbed me back and said, nah, don't you bother, son. <laughs> <laughs> And we can't let you go as well without asking you the big question. What do you make of Grado's new blonde barnet? He's never seen me before. Oh, no, we did meet at a half-time draw, but you didn't know me, didn't you know? No, I didn't recognise you now we're here. Oh, that's what it have been then. Yeah. Did you think it was Dan Petrescu? Yeah. <laughs> it, look, it looks a bit yellow, though, eh? Well, I'm going for the, I'm going for an old wrestler, Dusty Rhodes looks, but I've had fucking... I've had <laughs> Annie Lennox. Dusty Bin. <laughs> Uh, I've had Neil Lennon, something called Neil Lennon, yeah, I don't yeah. know, after back in the day, but I, I'm taking it, I'm looking, I need to spice my, my look up in the ring a wee bit, Dave, so that's that's where I went for that. That's good. good well, stuff. David, I know. Perfect. Cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> David, thank you very much for coming here. No I know problem. you're still a bit hungover after winning the BAFTA. No, I don't but, drink, uh, I'm a... What? No, I don't drink, a, well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of nine in a row player are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it, so we um we won the I League 2, and obviously it's... None of them drink. Aye. So we went to this big banquet hall at seven o'clock, had dinner. There was a free bar, nobody had a drink, all players. Says, now, half past nine, can we go back to the hotel now? That was it. Two and a half hours. You just won the league, got promoted to the big league, and that was the, the party. Fuck's sake. So. Not even a spread? No, no buffet? No, it was a buffet, but Aye. everybody just wanted to go and Volivons? Volivons, curried ones. Uh, pakora? Did you get pakora there? You get pakora, you get everyone, yeah. Oh. What's the first What's the first bit of scoff you go for when you come home? Um, some ties? No, I actually went for a white pudding supper. Oh. White pudding? <coughs> Do you know who got me that? Joyce Faulkner. She's fair up your way. Yeah. Joyce Faulkner, aye. She's, she's a Dundonian. She, uh, she brought me in white pudding. No, for, brilliant, yeah. yeah aye, there's a lot of things you miss, and then you end up just putting a load of weight on. Oh, so when, you get, when oh, you're Christ. getting your flight home this week, what, what are you going to take with you? I'm taking Iron Brew pastels. Oh. Seriously, Iron Brew pastels? Yep. So iron brew pastels, very sensible. Anything else? What else? Baby wipes, for fuck's sake. Prong cocktail crisps. <laughs> prong cocktail crisps. Do they not allow prong cocktail crisps? No, no you don't have any. You get... Well, you that's, you I actually get, get I was at a date last night and I had a prong cocktail starter. That blows my mind. You what, get spicy tomato. 1975 or what? <laughs> you get There's spicy... better starter than a prong cocktail. Spicy tomato. Right. Crisps. Masala crisps, that's all you get there. You don't get anything. And they don't eat... You can't get bacon there because Aye. bacon uh, pigs yeah, are up for yeah. a bit. Oh, but is it no the coos or no? They don't, you can't kill the coos. That's why them, you can't get moving for coos, you know? Yeah, no, they're, they're sacred. So if, if there's a cow in the middle of the road... Do you clap them? No, you're not allowed to do anything. You're not allowed to touch them? So you've got to wait. If, 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 if there's a cow in the middle of the road and you're on the bus, it happened to one game. We're going to the bus onto this game. There's a cow. And we couldn't, you couldn't pump your horn. You couldn't, oh, they do the horns all the time, but you can't move the cow. You've got to wait till the cow moves itself. You're not, you're not allowed to pump your horn, but you're allowed to pump sheep. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, fucking Lena and Tanner. David <coughs> Robertson, thanks very much no for problem. being on this football daft podcast. You've been absolutely fantastic. Go David, ahead. well done. You've been the best David on it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> when is it time for our Beer 52 match of the week, Grado? Oh, oh, no. Well, in that case, congratulations to Rangers supporter George Joyce, 
who correctly guessed the three in a result in the League Cup semi-final between the Jam Tarts and the Teddy Bears to win a case of beer. I'm raging about that. It's well. another one I've not won. This week, our Beer 52 match of the week is between St. Jean-Son and Hibs at the bottom of the table. All you have to do is guess the correct score before midday on Saturday. Everyone who gets the score right will go into the draw to win the beer. You can enter by commenting on the link on the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet. Tweet your score to at Football Daft Pod with the hashtag, hashtag free beer. Winners must be 18 or over. Stay in the UK. Mm, St. Johnson and Hibs at the mm. bottom of the table. That's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for St. Johnson win. Oof. What's the scoreline then? I'm going to go for 2-1. Oh, right. I'm, Hibernian seem to score two goals in all the games at the moment. So I'm going to go for St. Johnson 2, Hibernian 2. Mm, good shout. And you can get free beer from Beer52 as well, Grado. All you need to do is go to beer52.com slash daft and we can sort out free beers if you just cover the full 95 for the postage. Now, you normally get eight, but as you are a football daft listener, you get two extra freebies. And that, two plus eight, is a total of... <laughs> Ten beers, mate. Oofed. Your first box will be sent to you next day and will contain beer from all over this month's chosen destination, which is Korea. It's a monthly subscription for the beer, and Beer52, they don't hold you to ransom, so you can leave at any time. So just go to beer52.com slash daft... To get your first case of 10 beers for Iho Damo free. Well, that's it. Robbo was good. No, I disagree. <laughs> I thought he was magic. Oh, you ain't your Simon Kellner, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the same height. I'm the same height. <laughs> I've got all my own teeth, though, uh, sadly. Have you ever considered the neck plastic surgery in your life, David? No, not at all. My uh, my wife wants me to get my uh, back waxed. Oh, you got a hairy back? God. Yeah, just a wee bit at the top. That's fucking... Not that I'm bored, not that I'll be in a, ever in a bed with you, but... Don't rule it out. <laughs> Don't rule it out. What about David getting the BAFTA? I mean, that is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant, isn't it? Have, we, have we managed uh, producer John to get a, a clip cleared by the producers of that movie? Have we fucked? <laughs> I thought your David Robertson impersonation was tremendous. Can you give us another wee blast? Get that fucking picked up now! <laughs> Listen, Alison Rooney has contacted us. <laughs> and she said, My husband got me into this. Can you guess what? What? It's the Football Daft Podcast. You're kidding me, on. Yeah. She's left a review on the podcast app. Uh, she says, Worth a listen, Alison Rooney. Funniest thing I've heard in a long time. My husband got me into this, and it's sheer comedy. Alison, thank you very much indeed. And just to say a special thank, we're going to say, Rooney, 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 in your honour. Cheers, Alison Hen. Thanks for your listening, and keep up your support for the Football Dav podcast. I can't believe the reaction I'm getting from, from doing this. Mm. It's unbelievable. It's, I've never had a reaction in my career like I've had for this. It's like a, it's like a whole new world. It's a whole new world. Somebody complained that I swore, though. He's never I, heard me swear before. I know. It, it's weird when folk like you swear, because I, I get uncomfortable swearing <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> you? I get uncomfortable so vaping in front of you. I think we should drop the C word now. I think we need to get uh, I don't say it. So I'd like you to say from now on in uh, some rhyming slang. Maybe what about Roger Hunt? Uh, Jeff Hunt? Mm, uh, who's him that uh, they played with Dundee United? No Hunt. No Hunt. Because <laughs> he is a fucking... <laughs> nah, anyway, we're going to be back next week if, if they allow us back. Unless Ewan's back. Right, oh, knows he is. oh, God knows. Do you know, I used to worry about you, but I'll be honest with you now. After you said that he, that he custard pies you whenever you say that you're his best mate. Aye, every week. Every week I go, you're my best mate, and he just fucking. Can you imagine it in the Waltons, though? Good night, John Boy. Silence. I know. Good night, John Boy. What about Silence. Good night, Joe. Oh, fuck you. Aye. It wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have been the same wholesome family fun, would it? What about the Waltons, eh? Fucking bunch of cunts. <laughs> Jeff Hunt. Now, listen, I've just been handed a bit of paper here. Mm. It's some breaking news. Mm. And that is concerning Mr. Ewan Cameron. Who? Do you um, remember him? Ewan will be joining, rejoining, 
the Football Daft podcast next week. Yep, he's here to tell us why he's been absent. So, um, obviously, everybody on Twitter has been having a go at us, going, Where's Ewan? Where's Ewan? Where's Ewan? Ewan's coming on next week to explain the situation. So, can I just clarify at this point? Right. I don't have him tied up in a bag <laughs> in the cupboard under my stairs. So, Ewan is coming in next week. Looking forward to that. I've enjoyed standing in for him. Guest host. Oh, you're all right. He's, uh, thanks very much. That's, uh, I strive for all right to take. Big shoes to fill. An even bigger mouth to fill. But he'll be in next week and I'll be here as well. So looking forward to that. David, you've been football. Grado, you've been daft. As you say. Fuck the Waltons. <laughs> Good night, John Boy. <laughs> this is Four Network.